are open, all desires known, and from you no secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Christ our Lord. Son, Jesus Christ, with great triumph to your kingdom in heaven. Do not leave us comfortless, but send us your Holy Spirit to strengthen us and exalt us to that place where our Savior Christ has gone before, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God in glory everlasting. Amen. A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. When the apostles had come together, they asked him, Lord, is this the time when you will restore the kingdom to Israel? He replied, it is not for you to know the times or periods that the Father has set by his own authority, but you will receive power when the Holy Spirit has come upon you and you will be my witnesses in Jerusalem, in all Judea and Samaria, and to the ends of the earth. When he had said this, as they were watching, he was lifted up, and a cloud took him out of their sight. While he was going, and they were gazing up toward heaven, suddenly two men in white robes stood by them. They said, 
Men of Galilee, why do you stand looking up toward heaven? This Jesus, who has been taken up from you into heaven, will come in the same way as you saw him go into heaven. Then they returned to Jerusalem from the mount called Olivet, which is near Jerusalem, a Sabbath day journey away. When they had entered the city, they went to the room upstairs where they were staying, Peter and John and James and Andrew, Philip and Thomas, Bartholomew and Matthew, James, son of Alphaeus, and Simon the Zealot, and Judas, son of James. All these were constantly devoting themselves to prayer, together with certain women, including Mary, the mother of Jesus, as well as his brothers. The word of the Lord.
a reading from the first letter of Peter. Beloved, do not be surprised at the fiery ordeal that is taking place among you to test you, as though something strange were happening to you. But rejoice in so far as you are sharing Christ's sufferings, so that you may also be glad and shout for joy when his glory is revealed. If you are rivaled for the name of Christ, you are blessed because the spirit of glory, which is the spirit of God, is resting on you. Humble yourselves, therefore, under the mighty hand of God, so that he may exalt you in due time. Cast all your anxiety on him, because he cares for you. Discipline yourselves. Keep alert. Like a roaring liar, lion, your adversary, the devil, prowls around, looking for someone to devour. Resist him steadfast in your faith, for you know that your brothers and sisters in all the world are undergoing the same kinds of suffering. And after you have suffered for a little while, the God of all grace, who has called you to his eternal glory in Christ, will himself restore, support, strengthen, and establish you. To him be the power forever and ever. Amen. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God.
Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to John. Glory to you, Lord Christ. Jesus looked up to heaven and said, Father, the hour has come. Glorify your Son, so that the Son may glorify you. Since you have given him authority over all people, to give eternal life to all whom you have given him. And this is eternal life, that they may know you, the only true God, and Jesus Christ, whom you have sent. I glorified you on earth by finishing the work that you gave me to do. So now, Father, glorify me in your own presence with the glory I had in your presence before the world existed. I have made your name known to those whom you gave me from the world. They were yours, and you gave them to me, and they have kept your word. Now they know that everything you have given me is from you, for the words that you gave to me, I have given to them, and they have received them, and know in truth, that I came from you, and they have believed that you sent me. I am asking on their behalf. I am not asking on behalf of the world, but on behalf of those whom you gave me, because they are yours. All mine are yours, and yours are mine, and I have been glorified in them. And now I am no longer in the world, but they are in the world and I am coming to you. Holy Father, protect them in your name that you have given me, so that they may be one as we are one. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Christ. May the words of my mouth and the meditation of all our hearts be acceptable in your sight. O oh God, our strength and our redeemer. Amen. Why are you looking up? Why are you looking up? The disciples have been with Christ through his entire earthly ministry, seen him raised from the dead. They go out to Bethany, he asks, talks to them, and they ask him one question, is this the time when God will restore the kingdom of Israel? And I can just hear Jesus groan. You have been with me this long, and you're still asking the wrong questions. It is not for you to know the Father's will. And he ascends. So why are you looking up? In our gospel today, this is the beginning of what we call the high priestly prayer of Jesus. It is still our Monday Thursday evening. Jesus has washed the feet. They've had their last supper. Judas has gone off to betray him. Jesus has told Peter he will deny him. And he has just told all the disciples they will run away in fear and scatter to their own homes. And then he starts this prayer. This is just the beginning of the prayer. It'll take us three years to get to the end of it. But 
Jesus in this prayer. This is eternal life, that you know God, the Creator, and through the Creator, you know God, the Son. And then you will glorify God, and God will glorify you. And glorify in our scripture has limited meaning, but in John it has a specific meaning. You will make the presence of God visible. That is the glorification of God. That is what Jesus' ministry on this earth did, made the presence of God visible. And that is what he is praying to God, the creator, will allow the apostles, the disciples, and us to do here now, to make God visible. Glorify God. Too often we think of glorify God as getting down on our knees and praying to God and praising God, and that is wonderful. It is glorious. But what John and Christ are asking us to do is not to keep the knowledge of God here in our hearts, but to show God present in our lives to the world. And that's what those disciples were missing on that mount. God is not going to make Israel the nation they wanted it to be. God is not going to make this country some sovereign godly nation. That's not the purpose of God. The God is to make us one, as Christ prayed, one with all the earth, with all people, with all nations. And what Christ tells the disciples to do is be a witness. Now that word witness in the Greek, martyrus, martyr. That does not have our connotation of martyr, just as witness doesn't truly have our connotation of witness. It means to tell the truth. God calls us to tell the truth about Jesus Christ, his life here on earth, his resurrection, his ascension, and glorify God, reveal God's presence in this world. Glorify God by being a witness, by telling the truth. Now, these disciples, looking up to heaven, and I actually don't blame them. If I were there, I'd be looking up too. You know, if somebody said, why are you looking up? I would probably would say, but, and they say, no. That's not what Christ is calling you to do. He's not calling you to look up. Christ is calling you to look out. Look out into the world. To go forth into the world. To reveal God's love to the world. Not to wait around. Granted, they wait around for a little bit. Ten more days. But by themselves, they do not have the power. God will give them the power God has given us the power. The power is called the Holy Spirit. We celebrate that gift next week at Pentecost. But the Holy Spirit is here now with us, in us. But look out. Out into the world. So we can glorify Christ so that we can have eternal life. Eternal life is to know God the Creator, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit. To know, it doesn't mean just to say, oh, there is a God. It doesn't mean just to say, 
there is a Christ. It means to be in full relationship with God and for God to be in full relationship with us. That is knowing God and that is eternal life. And when we have this eternal life, we cannot help but make God visible in what we do, what we say. For we get to go into the world being Christ. This is what Jesus is telling the disciples. Be a witness. Be true. Tell the truth and be the body of Christ. Be my eyes and see what is needed in this world. Be my feet and go to where you are needed. Be my hands and do the work that you are called to do. Reveal God to the world. Glorify God. Show God's glory. We are so blessed. We are so blessed that we get this calling. This is what we get to do, not what we have to do, what we are privileged to do. I said not have to do, but maybe we do. Maybe with this calling, we cannot help but do this work. So let us go to that Mount of Olives with the apostles, with disciples. And yes, we can look up to heaven. Christ looked up to heaven when he began to pray. But then let the focus of our gaze be in this world. In this world, doing the work of Christ. Being the body of Christ. A little side note before we go on. We list the 11 apostles, and there were some women worshiping with them, including Mary, the mother of Jesus. This is the very last mention of Mary in our scripture. So the last we know about Mary, she is with the apostles, praising God, praying with the apostle disciples, being a follower of Christ. And Christ's brothers have joined in, and the community <coughs> of God is beginning to grow. The community right here, even before the gift of the Spirit, little by little, is growing. And when the Spirit comes, it explodes. Let's keep that explosion going. Let us shine with the glory of God. Let us reveal the glory of God in the brightest light that is unimaginable, which is love. God's love, which is on, in, and around us. We cannot help but share it with the world. <coughs> we cannot help but be Christ's body in this world. We cannot help but glorify God. In the name of Christ, Let us confess our faith in the words of the Nicene Creed. 
We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father, through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, was incarnate of the Holy Spirit and the Virgin Mary, and became truly human. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day he rose again, in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father, who with the Father and the Son is worshipped and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Let us pray. Dear Lord, help us to look forward. Help us to be witnesses, to tell the truth and make the presence and the love of God visible to our world now. Amen. Amen. In hope and joy, let us pray to the source of all life. We pray for the church throughout the world, especially that isolated and persecuted churches may find fresh strength in the Easter gospel. In the Anglican cycle of prayer, we pray for the church in the province of the West Indies. We pray especially for the health and well-being of our Bishop Gretchen, and that you will be with her as she awaits her surgery. In the diocesan cycle of prayer, we give thanks for the birth of God's holy church and for retired clergy and, their, and the ways their lives witness to God's love and enrich the faith and mission of our diocese. God of love, hear our prayer, hallelujah. We pray for all who gather here in person and online that our risen Savior may fill us with the joy of his holy and life-giving resurrection. God of love, hear our, our prayer. prayer. Hallelujah. We pray for the clergy and people of this parish that you may grant us humility to be subject to one another in love and that you will bless us to be a people striving for justice and mercy. In the parish cycle of prayer, we pray for Barbara Rankin, Jean Ratcliffe, and the Reverend Colby and Catherine Roberts. God of love, hear our prayer, hallelujah. We pray for an end to poverty, that you will help us provide for those who lack food, work, shelter, education, health care, that people of all faiths will work together to bring your mercy to a world in need. God of love, hear our, our prayer, alleluia. We pray for the people in all war-torn places, that by your power, wars, drought, and famine may cease through all the earth. God of love, Hear our prayer, alleluia. We pray that you may reveal the light of your presence to the sick, the weak, and the dying, that they may be comforted and strengthened. 
We pray for those we know who are ill at home or in the hospital, especially Robin, Tab, Jean, Lois, Sonia, Cordy, Tim, Layla, Claire, Matthias, Sylvia. And for others we may name out loud or in our hearts. that they may experience the healing and renewing touch of Jesus. God of love, hear our prayer, alleluia. We pray that those who have died in your peace, remembering especially Karen and Anne, and for those whose faith is known to you alone, that they may dwell with you in the resurrection and share in the victory of Jesus Christ. We ask you to be with and strengthen all who mourn. God of love, hear our prayer, alleluia. In thanksgiving, we acknowledge your power to save, and we pray that you will send the fire of your Holy Spirit upon us, your people, and that we may be forgiven all our sins and bear faithful witness to the resurrection of Jesus the Christ, God of love. Hear our prayer, alleluia. Almighty God, by your Holy Spirit, you have made us one with your saints in heaven and on earth. Grant that in our earthly pilgrimage we may always be supported by this fellowship of love and prayer and to know ourselves to be surrounded by their witness to your power and to mercy. We ask this for the sake of Jesus Christ, in whom all our intercessions are acceptable through the Spirit, and who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. Amen. The peace of Christ be always with you. And also with you. We share the peace of Christ with each other. Peace and glory. Stand. Stand. He's tapping. He's Ruth. Peace, Diane. Peace, Diane. Peace, Lord. Peace, Lord. Walk in love as Christ loved us and gave himself for us an offering and sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving.
This is our custom. If you wish to drink from the common cup, it will be the first cup that comes down the row. If you prefer to take the wine to intinction, hold the bread so it's visible, and the second cup that comes by will be there for uh, intinking the bread into the wine. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right to glorify you, Father, and to give you thanks. For you alone are God, living and true, dwelling in light inaccessible from before time and forever. Fountain of life and source of all goodness, you made all things and filled them with your blessing. You created them to rejoice in the splendor of your radiance. Countless throngs of angels stand before you to serve you night and day, and beholding the glory of your presence, they offer you unceasing praise. Joining with them, and giving voice to every creature under heaven. We acclaim you and glorify your name as we sing. in power. Your mighty works reveal your wisdom and love. You formed us in your own image, giving the whole world into our care, so that in obedience to you, our Creator, we might rule and serve all your creatures. When our disobedience took us far from you, you did not abandon us to the power of death. In your mercy, you came to our help so that in seeking you we might find you. Again and again you called us into covenant with you, and through the prophets you taught us to hope for salvation. Father, you loved the world so much that in the fullness of time you sent your only Son to be our Savior, incarnate by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary. He lived as one of us yet without sin, to the poor, he proclaimed the good news of salvation to prisoners, freedom, to the sorrowful, joy. To fulfill your purpose, he gave himself up to death, and rising from the grave, destroyed death, and made the whole creation new. And that we might live no longer for ourselves, but for him who died and rose for us, he sent the Holy Spirit, his own first gift for those who believe 
to complete his work in the world and to bring to fulfillment the sanctification of all. When the hour had come for him to be glorified by you as heavenly father, having loved his own who were in the world, he loved them to the end. At supper with them he took bread, and when he had given thanks to you, he broke it and gave it to his disciples and said, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. After supper he took the cup of wine. And when he had given thanks, he gave it to them and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink this, do it in the remembrance of me. Father, we now celebrate this memorial of our redemption for calling Christ's death and descent among the dead, proclaiming his resurrection and ascension to your right hand, awaiting his coming in glory, and offering to you from the gifts you have given us this bread and this cup. We praise you and we bless you. We praise you. We bless you. We give thanks to you, and we pray to you, Lord our God. Lord, we pray that in your goodness and mercy, your Holy Spirit may descend upon us, and upon these gifts, sanctifying them and showing them to be holy gifts for your holy people, the bread of life and the cup of salvation, the body and blood of your Son, Jesus Christ. Grant that all who share this bread and cup may become one body and one spirit, a living sacrifice in Christ through the praise of your name. Remember, Lord, your one holy Catholic and apostolic church, redeemed by the blood of your Christ, Reveal its unity, guard its faith, and preserve it in peace. And grant that we may find our inheritance with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Blessed Timothy, with matriarchs, patriarchs, prophets, apostles, and martyrs, and all the saints who have found favor with you in ages past. We praise you in union with them and give you glory through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Through Christ and with Christ and in Christ, all honor and glory are yours, almighty God and Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, forever and ever. Amen. As our Savior Christ has taught us, we now pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial, and deliver us from evil. The kingdom, the power, and the glory of yours now and forever. Amen. Alleluia! Christ our Passover is sacrificed for us. Therefore let us keep the feast. Alleluia. Sweet 
Jesus, Lamb of God, have mercy on us. Jesus, bear of our sins, have mercy on us. Jesus, Redeemer, Redeemer of the gifts of God for the people of God.
stand as you are able. Let us pray. Loving, Loving God, God, we give, give you thanks for restoring us in your image and nourishing us with spiritual food in the sacrament of Christ's body and blood. Now send us forth a people forgiven, healed, renewed, that we may proclaim your love to the world and continue in the risen life of Christ our Savior. Amen. The God of peace, who brought again from the dead our Lord Jesus Christ, the great shepherd of the sheep, through the blood of the everlasting covenant, make you perfect in every good work to do his will working in you that which is well-pleasing in his sight. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be among you and remain with you always. Amen. Amen. Please be seated. We have birthdays, travel, anniversaries. We're praying for you or the RV? Yeah. <laughs> <That's curious. laughs> okay, we will pray on page 831, prayer 53 for travelers. For Wendy and Cherish. Let us pray together. O oh God, our Heavenly Father, whose glory Life fills the whole creation, creation and whose presence we find wherever we go, go preserve those who travel, travel and particularly Wendy and Cherish. Surround them with your loving care, protect them from every danger, and bring them in safety to their journey's end. Through Jesus Christ the Lord. Amen. Pentecost is next week. Birthday of the church. There will be a birthday cake. So if for no other reason, come to church to have birthday cake. Our first reading, our Acts reading, we already have Rod Scott's. French, Italian, German, Spanish, uh, and I'll probably do Greek. Uh, we also have an English reader, so it will be in English too. <laughs> if you would like to contribute another language, just come and let me know and we'll add that into the mix. Uh, you don't have to have a copy of it. I will email you the copy in uh, the language that, did I say German, Rick? You did. Okay. Uh, that, that you'll be reading in. So if you just speak it and you need a copy, or I will email you a copy, but 
the more languages we can have, the better. We, I don't think we're going to come close to the number that's listed here in, or there in our scripture, but uh, we can do our best. Uh, Tuesday night continues. We've had two weeks on the David saga, and finally, on our third week, we're going to meet David. <laughs> so it's a fascinating, fabulous story. But come for dinner at 5, come for the Eucharist at 6, come for the educational program following. One of the parts, or all three of the parts, you are all welcome. Uh, are there any, I know sandwich making, we wanted to stress sandwich making. The sandwich making has been done here to help the homeless for over 10 years. Uh, this, this week we're moving it to the, that would be the east side of the parish hall. Um, we want to make sure people that want to make sandwiches can make sandwiches, but we also want to make sure that people... West side. Thank you, Becky. I'm, I will be an east coaster all my life, and the ocean will always be to the east. <laughs> <laughs> yes, I, I know. But anyway, so the sandwiches we're making, but if you want to just sit, have coffee, chat, the space will be available for that also. Yes, Annie. Let us pray right now. Dear God, we know that you are the source of all healing, the source of all comfort, the release of all pain. We pray that you will be with Annie, keep her safe, make her healthy and whole, ease her pain, so that she may live her fullest life to your glory. And the blessing of God Almighty, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit be upon you. Remain with you always. Amen. brings me to a thought. I've been thinking for about, how long have I been here? A year and three or four months. I would like to, and I'm probably in September, it's going to happen, start a healing station for healing prayers. Um, I don't know if it's going to be during the Eucharist part of the service or after the service, but I'm thinking over here by our icons, we'll set up a little station for healing prayers. Because I know Annie is not the only one in our community that can use a prayer for healing. So that is going to happen. I'm still putting it together in my mind. Uh, any other prayers? I was talking sandwiches. So make sandwiches. Come to coffee hour. Make a few sandwiches and go back to coffee hour. Have coffee hour and go make a few sandwiches. <laughs> you don't have to stand there and make 200. Make a few. Help out. Hands and gloves. But we have experienced sandwich makers. They will guide you through the process. <laughs> <laughs> Any other announcements for the good of the church? Yes, Candy. Um, Please. As you may or may not know, there is a service, a funeral service this Thursday at 1030. It is for um, Dwayne Crozier, who was a deacon at St. Timothy's, and his picture is in the hallway um, out there, if you don't know who he is. He was a great contributor to St. Timothy's Church. He built many, many cabinets. He replaced the sewer lines, the water lines, a variety of things. And this um, week, Becky and Marty are going to go through the church and put his name on all of the things that he contributed to the church. But we need some contributions of some savory foods for the reception after the service. So if you are able, there is a sign up sheet on a couple of tables out in the parish hall. And we would appreciate if you could contribute some of those. We have lots of sweets in the freezer, but if you really want to bring a sweet, we'll take that too. 
So, and I would like, this is, I was asked to make this announcement, but as I was up at the altar thinking about other things, there's another announcement I would like to do. And that is, <laughs> I would like to encourage men and women, if you are interested in attending the altar with Reverend Colby and Joan Dahl, um, your participation would be greatly appreciated and loved. It's a fun opportunity to be more involved with the church. It doesn't take a tremendous amount of time. And so think about it and pray about it and talk to Colby if you have any questions. Thank you, Candy. <laughs> Well, well that's, that's, a, that's actually, she may be a guest organist, but she's not a guest. She's been here for several times. We consider her part of our family now, so, but we thank you most heartily for playing. She will be playing for us again next week at our Pentecost service. Uh, we are blessed to have you here with us. And Candy, thank you for the reminder of Dwayne's memorial service on Thursday. It starts at 10.30. The reception will be right after the service and here. For those who wish, there will then be a graveside service at 1 o'clock at the Terrace Heights Cemetery. Any other announcements this morning? Well, um, it, it has, has been mentioned in our broadcast, and I've told many people, uh, Ginger did lose her daughter, Anne. Uh, last week, she passed away on Wednesday. Uh, Anne was a priest in this church. Uh, I did not have the opportunity to know her well, but did get the chance to meet her and have some wonderful conversations with her. Uh, Anne, uh, Ginger is now in Oakland and will stay there uh, through the service for Anne. And we, we didn't have a definite time when she's coming back, but she thought she'd be there about 10 days. So probably won't see her next week, but we will keep her in our prayers. And uh, Doug, Anne's husband, and all their family, and all those who loved and cared for Anne. And we pray for the repose of Anne's soul, and knowing that God will hold her in his own. this moment, no, there's not going to be a service here. Uh, that would have to be a Ginger's request. Let us stand for our final hymn. <laughs> Thank you.
name of Christ. Alleluia. 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 Alleluia.
down. But it's sort of like, well, you know, it's, 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 it's,